Penny. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Dr. Nurse, and I'm working on Stereochemistry 3, which is our series on stereochemistry, which is going to accompany the book I'm writing on stereochemistry, which will be a web book that you'll be able to use next year or in the fall of 2010. 2010? 2010, yes. Okay, so at the end of stereochemistry 2, we were looking at this molecule and we had established that this molecule was chiral. And I told you that any molecule that has an asymmetric atom in it, specifically an asymmetric carbon in it, which is a group with four different groups, is chiral. Okay? And what that means is I could draw another molecule that is the mirror image of this molecule, and that molecule will be, it's a nantumer, okay? and it is a different molecule. Um, since they are different molecules, and I will draw that other molecule, since it is a different molecule, it needs to have a different name. And what we use to name um, stereoisomers, enantiomers, diastereomers, which is another type you're going to learn about, we use the con ingold prelog system of nomenclature. Now, there are very specific rules for this nomenclature, and I have delineated them in the text, and I don't think I'm going to bother with writing all of them down. There's also an excellent summation of these rules in your textbook. However, I'm just going to give you a few basic ideas. The way it works is you assign, so this is con ingold prelog rules, you assign a value of one, two, three, or four to each group attached to the asymmetric carbon. <clears throat> These numbers are priority numbers. They are based on, and this is what I'm not going to go through in gory detail right here. I'm going to give you a brief introduction, but what they're based on is atomic number at first point of difference. That's it. This is like my simple, simple way of saying this. There's a lot to this, and you kind of have to get the hang of it. But you'll see me working it, and hopefully this will make, it'll start to make sense. So we're looking for highest atomic number as we work our way out bond by bond from the asymmetric carbon. And I think watching me do this is like the whole thing. Okay, so once you do this, you trace a circle. Well, let's put it this way. You um, orient number four to the back. You trace a circle from priority one to two to three to four, not to four, that because that one's in the back, one to two to three. If the circle is clockwise, you call it R, which stands for, I believe, rectus. Oops. Rectus. And I, is that Latin? Mm -hmm. for right, to the right, okay, and then if it's counterclockwise, it is S, which stands for sinister or sinestra, I believe, and that means to the left, Clint, mm -hmm. 
sinister? My son is a Latin scholar, so I'm asking him. <laughs> I, I've heard people say sinestra. That might be another ver version of it. But I always said sinister because you think sinister evil left-handed. No, I'm just joking. Okay. So um, that's basically how you do it. Now you have to watch me do it for it to make any sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign these using the Kant Engel Prey Log rules. So how would I assign this? This is the asymmetric carbon, and what I'm doing is I'm assigning priorities bond by bond, working my way out, looking for the first difference in atomic number. So when I go out one bond from the center, I find a bromine, I find a hydrogen, I find a carbon, this is really a carbon here, we'll put that in a little box, and then we find another carbon, and we'll put that in a diamond, which looks just like a box, okay? Now, those are the first atoms one bond out. You compare those. You don't compare the whole chain. You just compare those. Comparing those, bromine has the highest atomic number. So I assign that a value of 1. Hydrogen clearly has the lowest atomic number. So you assign that a value of 4. These two carbons appear to tie. And they do tie. So what you have to do is work your way out to the next level, okay? And I'm going to use a different color. I hope it shows up. The next level out on this carbon would be three hydrogens. The next level out here would be two hydrogens and another carbon. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see the green? Okay. So at the next level out, we are comparing HHH to HHC. It is not accumulation of mass. It's just the first point of difference. So when I compare these one by one, carbon versus hydrogen, hydrogen versus hydrogen, hydrogen versus hydrogen, this carbon has a higher atomic number than this hydrogen, so this gets the higher priority. So this is number two, and this is number three. Okay? Now I've done all the work. And because I've done all the work, I don't really have to do that one, but I'm going to do it. Okay, this is one, obviously this is four, this one's two, and this one's three. Now, they, these molecules happen to have number four going away, the way it's described right here. It says orient number four to the back. This is just a rule, and I'm going to show you how to get around that rule. But these happen to be to the back. How do you know they're to the back? They're to the back because they've got this little wedge. All right. So what we want to do is just trace the circle. Let's get these done. Trace the circle one to two to three, like so. It looks clockwise. It is clockwise because number four is going away. So this is the R compound. This one has to be the S because we drew it as a mirror image. But let's check that. Um, I did this one wrong. Ha ha. I'm going to redo it. You should all be yelling and screaming because I didn't trace my circle right. My circle should go from 1 to 2 to 3. I drew my circle from 1 to 3 to 2. That made no sense. So it should be going this way. It's counterclockwise. You'll see me do many of these, so don't get alarmed. This is S. This compound should be the opposite. So when I trace from 1 to 2 to 3, it is a clockwise circle. So this is the R. So if you sign the first one right, you automatically know the second one. Okay, so in our next uh, video, we'll call it Stereochemistry 4, I'm going to show you a different way to draw these, and we're going to try to start working on two centers. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video, video 4. Thank you.